So this talk is about uh, IntelliJ. It's a great idea. I believe it's the best I've ever worked with. But, and it boosts my productivity a lot. I'll show you how in this talk. But unfortunately, some people use it, some developers use it as a regular text editor or do use some advanced feature, but not in some efficient, not in very efficient way. So today we learn how to be more efficient in this, with this tool. I assume different levels in the audience. Some will learn more today, some less, but I'll cover a lot of cool features. So I'm sure that each one of you will learn something that make you more productive today. A few words about myself. My name is Maxim Novak. Um, I'm de I developed software for the last uh, 10 years. In the last three years, I work on the backend core services at Wix. And I really like efficiency and optimization everywhere. So naturally, I want to optimize the way I work with the tool that I work with it on a daily basis, like IntelliJ. And I'll show you how I do it today. So, before we dive in, I want to talk a few minutes about key maps. So, From time to time, I hear two developers like arguing, hey, my key map is better, you should change. So, I'll tell you what. If the developer sitting next to you used this tool for the last 10 years, chances are you're not going to convince him to convert, right? But you still need to work together. So what we do? First thing, if you work together, like doing pairing, uh, talk in, speak in terms of actions and not shortcuts. So instead of saying do command O, tell him search for a class. And if you do switch the keyboard, the easiest way is to change to your key map. Once you do it, it's a bit cut here. You don't see it. It doesn't work here, but it's a command in tilde. The projector can't show the shortcut. Then you will see this screen. You click three. And then you choose your own key map. So it takes you less than a second, and you switch to your own key map. But just to be fair, when you do it, teach the other developer to switch back. Otherwise, they'll hate you and will never let you close to their machine again. So, so guys, can you come closer or can you do something about the mic? Yeah. yeah, one, two, three, works. It's okay. okay. What? Can you talk? One, two, one, it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good, one, two, three. Whenever you turn your head over there, it like works really good. But when you're doing like this, it a bit and then it's side. Oh, okay. Okay, I think it's okay now. Let's continue. So basically, what you need to know is how to change your key map, and like I said, just teach the other developer how he can teach back. Otherwise, he will hate you. So this presentation, I will use the new macOS key map. Works. Um, but it applies to any, any key map and any operating system. Now, a um, really important thing is uh, you, ca again, can see the marks of the shortcut, but uh, to find an action, it's Command Shift A. Uh, command Shift A. So this, this uh, way, you can find any action in uh, IntelliJ. It have two benefits. Can you hear me? Yeah. No, we can't use the regular because I'm going to do live coding, so... Okay. So, Command Shift A is a find action. To let you find any, any action in IntelliJ, it has two benefits. One, that you can reach any action very easily. And the second one, when you, when you use it, it also works recursively, you can see the shortcut. So if you use some action a few times, more and more, with the time you learn to it and you stop using this menu and you just remember the shortcut. Now let's move to the fun part where we're gonna, we're gonna do live coding. 
You see it well? Okay, so. What? More? I think it's pretty big. Um, maybe we change it to white. Oh no. Let's don't try experimental stuff. Okay. So, first thing is um, I'm sure it happened to you. You connect your laptop to a monitor, maybe projector, and then this tab is like half of the screen. So, how do you uh, make it smaller without the mouse? So, of course, yeah, you can go to here to the middle and uh, drag it, but there is an easier way. You see these numbers here, like the one and seven? They're here for, for a reason. You can zoom. Um, you can use the, uh, the shortcut indicator. So command one will go to the project uh, tab. By the way, I'm using the presentation assist plugin, so you'll see all the shortcuts I'm using. So now I'm here, and now I can do command shift left to stretch left. Um, now every menu in IntelliJ is searchable. So of course this one, so I can uh, search for the main class. And let's run it. So it's a very simple application. They just write a log line, as you can see. So I'm sure it happens to you, you run some application, some class writes some log, now you want to go to this class and see what happens. So how do you do it? So the, uh, some people go and select this, but then it's hard, so you just double click and it's selected. The next step, a lot of people will do copy-paste to the search tool, but you don't need to copy-paste. You just click Command O, and it's already there. Now, who knows what this will do? Yes, it will go to line number four. So, lookups is a very important capability of uh, IntelliJ. Uh, especially in large projects, you want to navigate, search, find stuff, it's very useful. So the first thing, you can use command O to search by class. It will search in your project. If you do command O again, it will expand the search to also to your dependencies. Now, command Alt O will uh, find symbol. So for example, it will look for any method or variable in all the classes. So you remember there is some class with next double method. You don't remember the name, easy to find it. And you can uh, search by file. Now, if you by mistake, let's say I do command O, so it's a find class name, it can't find it. I don't need to exit this menu and do uh, command shift O. I can just click command shift O, it will just change the search, but the argument will stay there. It also works for directories, like this. Also for file extensions, like this. Um, another very useful is the uh, all the searches, you can do camel case. So for example, I want to find the illegal argument Exception, very easy. Also, a uh, wildcard matching. And another cool feature is uh, you can filter by the namespace. So you remember there is some daytime class, you don't, but in Joda, you're not sure how it's called. So you can do joda.dt and it, you can find it. Now, if I click enter now, it will go to this class. Shift enter will open it in a detached window. So we have a new window just with this, useful when you use more than one monitor, especially. So let's go see this class. Have over, you don't see it um, because of the projector, let's fix it because of the numbers, but it have over 2000 lines of code. So how do we navigate here? So command F12 will open this navigation um, pop-up and as I said before, everything is searchable, so also here. So let's say I want to find something with minutes. Can do um, minutes. And easily found. Now, another cool feature here, you can search by the type. So let's say I want to find some method that accepts long or returns long. So it also works this way. Now, let's talk about navigation. Navigation is also very important because when you work on 
different files. You need to navigate between them. I'll show you how few, few easy ways to do it. So you can move between tabs in the order you open them. So if I do Command Alt and Left now, I will go back to Lookups and to Joda and back to Lookups and to Main. Also, I can go forward. To see recently viewed files, it will be Command E. You can see all the recently viewed files. And Command Shift E will show us the recently edited files. It's very useful to switch between. Sometimes you want all the files that you viewed, sometimes the edited files. Bookmarks, you can set with the Control Shift and the number. So I'll zoom in a bit. So let's say Control Shift 1, and here I can do Control Shift 4. Now Control 1 will go to this one, Control 4 will go to this one. It's very useful again when you work on a few pieces of code. Now, uh, what? Does it work files? Yes, of course. It works between, like, across the project. Now, if you have some non-compiling code, so you will see here in the tab uh, these red lines. You can click on it, it will go here. But we want to use the mouse less, so F2 will go to the next uh, compilation error, and Shift F2 will go back forth. Let's move to text editing. After all, that's like the main thing we do here, text editing, except of developing software. So the, the feature that I use most is the syntax-aware selection, or sometimes called incremental selection. Uh, with Alt and Up, I can start selecting and increase the selection. And it's really aware of the code, and it will help me to select like stuff that makes sense. And then I can go back with the down. Now, OK, um, let's uh, make a little bit more space here. So uh, again, like we use the Command 1 to go to the project menu. Command 1 again will close it. And uh, Command 4 will go to the run menu. And Command 4 again will close it. Uh, duplicate line, a lot of people do copy paste. So you don't need to. Command D will duplicate the line. Command Delete will delete lines. Move lines again. A lot of people I see do cut and paste. So just uh, Command Shift. Um, up and down, it also works for methods. Um, and to comment lines, command slash, so it, you can easily comment stuff. Let's move to smart completion. So we have this class here, and we have four, four values here. Now, let's say we want to make them uh, private, because they should be private, right? What's the easiest way to do it? So you can type private on each one of them. Or you can type private once and then copy paste. But you can do alt, alt, you keep the alt, and then you can mul select multiple lines. And you can do like this. Nice, right? So another uh, cool feature here that uh, Scala does um, the, uh, it understands the type. But we don't see the type. So let's say we want to see this va value C. What's the type of it? Can you see or should I zoom? Is it better? Yes. Okay. So let's say I want to see what's the type of C. So comma, uh, control shift P will do it. I can see the TC char set. Now let's say I want to uh, print uh, this thing. You can do priv. And tab. Now you click C, and then you choose, a, um, let's say, display name. And it makes this nice snippet of printing with the, and telling us what we are actually printing. Now, next thing will be um, show available uh, intention. So every time you, you see some highlights, you can click uh, Alt Enter. And will uh, help you to to do some stuff. So, for example, Alt Enter here will do import, of course. Now um, we can click Enter to to actually do the import. But let's say we have this com sun XML internal or something. If it's internal, I don't know why it's even public. But let's say we don't want to see this ever again. So we click right, and we can do exclude com sun XML. Let's say internal. Enter, enter. Now next time we do. I'll enter here, we won't see it never again. 
So we can import the codec uh, as Scala. Now with the command P, we can uh, see what is the expected parameter type here. So it's a char set. Now we know that C is a char set. All the other, uh, all the other values are, are not. So when we do completion, auto completion, we expect to see char set here. So it is there, but we have a lot of unrelated stuff. So command control shift space, it's smart completion. It will show us only the relevant stuff. So uh, control shift space, enter will put it in. Uh, command uh, alt L will uh, reformat the code. Uh, let's move to some Scala specific stuff because this is a Scala conference, right? Um, so, some, so many times in Scala, I begin by writing uh, two, two classes in the same file. Then when one of them grow, I want to extract it. So here we see two classes. It's very easy. You click F6, enter, 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 and it's out. Now, um, control alt o to optimize imports. And again, we see this highlight here around conversion. Um, you click Alt Enter to see what's going on and tells you, okay, the file, there is only one class here, the file doesn't match, let's change the name. So we see here one volume, bi, which is a big int, and we see this, uh, that it's signed to be one, which is in, clearly an int. So how does it work? Of course, um, implicit conversion, right? But we, we, we want to know how really it works. So control Q, by the way, you see this underline? It means that we have an implicit conversion here. So control Q will open this menu, will show us that it's int to big int. We can click enter to go to see the source code of this. Uh, if, you click, if, you do it, if you do it control Q again, you do alt enter, you can actually make it, uh, choose make explicit. Okay, some people will have it. Let's move to parameters. Again, we have an implicit parameter here. So this future gets two parameters. One is the function, that the work that it does. And the second is the implicit executor. If you want to see what's the implicit, in this case, it's really easy because it's nearby, but not always. So command shift P will show us the, the implicit. You can go click enter and go to the source code. Now, last slide. Is uh, will show you how IntelliJ can make you become better developers. It highlights all the stuff that it's not so good. So you really should pay, pay attention to it. Sometimes I see people developing and all of the screen is highlighted, they just don't see it. So for example, and all this can be easily fixed with Alt Enter. So here we have a typo. So really easy to fix. Unused variable, Alt Enter, remove. Now find something and then check if it's defined. You can replace this with exist and Exists and check equality can convert, can replace with contains. Check in length zero, the same as is empty, and extract, taking the first um, in the list, it's ahead. Drop and take, it will be slice. Now, before we finish, uh, I want to show you another uh, nice thing. It's called pro productivity guide. So again, command shift A to the find, find action tool. So here you can actually see how many times you use the shortcuts and when last time. So this way you can follow your improvement if you're starting using it more or less. So as you can see, I use it quite a lot. And uh, just uh, one more thing to emphasize the importance of uh, find action. Um, you can also discover new functionality by this. So for example, one day I said, uh, hmm, interesting. Let's say what I can do with GitHub. So I did Command Shift A, right here in GitHub, and then I say, "Nice, open by by GitHub. Let's check what it does." And actually, it opens this file on GitHub. Very useful when people uh, ask you to find their link. Thank you.